on today's Techno Babble. Live streaming from ProPresenter 6. This is Tech No Babble, your weekly source for church video and graphics news, perspectives, tips, and tricks. And now, here's your host, Paul Clifford. Hi, and welcome again to Techno Babble. This is the show where every week I help you with video and graphic design for your church. My name is Paul Allen Clifford. So, you might know that I'm the ProPresenter guy. Well, at least that's what um, the guy that runs Triple Wide Media called me when I was at SALT 2016. Um, so ProPresenter is one of my big things that I'm really good at. And if you didn't know, if you haven't seen any of my tutorials, then they're available by going to bit.ly slash pro6, and that'll take you directly there. So, one thing that I've recently learned that you can do, there is this interesting little checkbox that at first I didn't know what it did, and I'm going to show you what it does, and then we're going to get into more of the nitty-gritty on what you can do with it. Now, this is very similar to a tutorial I did on using Siphon in Pro 6, but it's more targeted exactly for doing live streaming. So let's head over to my computer and we'll uh, wake up this display and take a look. If you want to live stream with ProPresenter, it's actually not all that difficult, but you need to know a couple of little things. First off, if we go into Preferences, which you can get to up here, about ProPresenter 6, by the way, this technique only works in ProPresenter 6 for Mac. Sorry PC people, sorry people who haven't upgraded yet, this is one of those things. So you go to Preferences, that's a Command Comma by the way, that'll take you there. Go to Display, and down here it says Enable Siphon. And turning that off doesn't seem like it does anything. Turning it on doesn't seem like it does anything. I'm going to tell you what it does. So uh, we turn that on, and then you're going to want to have some encoding software. The software that I know does this is OBS. Um, so if we go to OBS, which I have open already over here, um, I've gone ahead and I've added a new scene, a new source. Uh, I guess it's a scene and then we're going to add sources to the scene because they're all they all need to be there at the same time called this pro presenter 6 i've got one for the camera i've got a picture in picture stuff like that we're just going to keep it simple i've added one called pro presenter 6 now i'm going to click and i'm going to add a um game capture with siphon okay and I could add the existing one, but I'm going to create a new one, and I'm just going to call it Pro 6, just so that it's nice and simple for you to see what happens. Then I'm going to click OK. That name is already in use. So let's try Pro Presenter 6, no spaces, because I don't believe I've used that. OK. So... This brings up this properties dialog, and I can select the source. I'm going to go with the output from ProPresenter 6. That's what that siphon, enable siphon checkbox did. It uh, enabled that so that it would show up as a source here. Okay, so I do that. I can crop it. I can tweak things like that if I wanted to, uh, but I'm just going to leave it as is. And once I do that, you will see that, in fact, when I go over here to this and click Amazing Grace, how sweet the sound, it shows up here. Okay, nice and simple. There is a problem, though. It could be that you need to get audio from the soundboard 
into here. So um, here, I clicked on minus, I should have clicked on plus. So we need to bring in audio. So let's uh, bring in audio, audio input capture. Um, we're going to create a new one. Um, let's call this sound board, just so that it uh, makes a lot of sense here. Click that. And now I've got all my input devices here on this Mac. Let's say I'm using a Griffin iMic USB system. I could be using the built-in input, but let's just say it's the Griffin iMic just for giggles. Um, I could click OK. I think I'm actually going to choose built-in input just so there, that I don't get like a, a loop. So, because I don't actually have anything plugged into the built-in input right now. Yeah, so I'm not getting any strangeness it looks like, and I'm not hearing anything through my headphones, so that's good. But what if you wanted the audio from ProPresenter? That's when it gets tricky. You would think that you could just click this, Audio Output Capture, um, create a new one, OK, select a device, and there's no devices to select. So how do you do that? Well, you need a piece of software that will send the audio that comes out of ProPresenter into this. Now you can do that with cabling, you can come out of the headphone jack and back into the microphone jack, but it, that could be problematic. So instead of doing that, let us uh, let me show you the software that you can download. So I've gone ahead, and the one that most people think about is Soundflower. That's by Rogue Amoeba Software, and that will allow you to do just that. But there all are alternative software. So if you go to alternative2.net slash software and you type the name of the software or you do a search here, you'll get alternative software. Now sometimes it's iffy. So, you know, right here you have two thumbs down. Uh, you know, there's other stuff, audio bus loopback which is actually rogue amiga, amiga sound siphon etc occasionally you'll find something that includes similar words but really isn't helpful whatsoever the dante via for example wouldn't be helpful in this situation it might help you get audio from your dante system but if you don't have a dante system that's not going to help you whatsoever so Keep that in mind that sometimes they're iffy, you might have to experiment, but basically you need a piece of software that routes that from one thing to the other, and um, that's how you get the audio in. So in this situation, this is what I would do, is I would take the audio from the soundboard and bring that into ProPresenter. If I just wanted to play a video, let's say that you're only using this for playing back pre-recorded services when you don't actually have a physical service or when there's a missionary in that talks about doing missions work in a closed country something like that then um, you would have the audio output capture audio device and not the soundboard because you wouldn't want to hear that so you can really tweak this. Uh, then you would uh, go into the settings here <clears throat> and select the streaming settings. You can do Facebook Live. You can do any of your normal uh, RMTP uh, streaming. Uh, YouTube, a lot of churches use that. Um, so you have some different options here. Um, thought there was just a 
plain RMTP. Let's see here. Custom streaming server. There's where it is. So you put your information in there and you can create it. Uh, you can also record, create hotkeys to do things. You know, basically that's what OBS does. I'm not going to get more into this. Uh, it has the ability to do some basic uh, stuff with, like, this is the preview. Um, this is actually here. You don't have to be in studio mode. The basic mode is right here, so whatever you choose, that's what's up. You can see it's getting sound from that. And... Um, or you could go into studio mode, and in studio mode, it's kind of like a video switcher, so you can select different things. Here's my camera. It's off point of there. You can see there's some latency, but uh, I could do that, and I could transition over to that. So I have some different choices of what to do, but that's how to stream from ProPresenter into OBS uh, using Pro 6 and Siphon. Well, I hope you found that interesting. I would have said probably a month ago that you wouldn't get very good results when trying to do this. But since I came out with uh, the tutorial a week or so ago, I've had um, a couple of churches contact me. Now, their, their results are not what I'd call awesome, but it's better than just one static webcam in the back of the sanctuary. So keep that in mind. We're, we're talking about the cheap and dirty way to, of doing things, not the high-end production value way of doing things. And that matters. Uh, it's still head and shoulders of above uh, a lot of public access church television services. So keep it in mind, and we'll go from there. If you like this content, you'd like my email newsletter, so head on over to trinitydigitalmedia.com slash newsletter. There you can sign up and get all sorts of links, tips, and tricks about church tech. Until next time, this is Paul Allen Clifford with trinitydigitalmedia.com. Go out and change eternity. Thank you.